so far we have discussed about global alignment problem now the question we are asking what about local alignment problem what about sequence greatly varying in the lengths is the question uh, we often encounter when we try to do sequence alignments uh, sometimes there are two sequences of the similar length but they have a very small portion of their sequences between them are of a common or similar type in other words the two sequences uh, that are only share a small portion of common or commonality then what we can do to find out those common region which typically is a local alignment problem and that's why uh, we need to actually go and look at local alignment algorithms where the global alignment algorithms cannot be used efficiently so local alignment algorithms are typically used to deduce and align the optimally sub regions in the two sequences we are not looking for a complete global alignment we are looking at sub regions in the sequences of same similar uh, size or similar length or greatly varying lengths for example here in this case one sequence is quite large another sequence is quite sh short or small and we want to find out the, what is the best alignment for this particular sequence in this particular large sequence and smith waterman algorithm is one of the well known algorithm to solve this problem it is similar to the needleman wanch algorithm it is also dynamic programming approach which try to align two sequences and it also guaranteed to find the best possible alignment but there are subtle differences between smith uh, smith waterman algorithm and needleman wanch algorithm one difference is in the scoring and the trace back also in the scoring the negative values are not allowed that's a very peculiarity of smith waterman algorithm that's why minimum value in a cell of a scoring matrix is zero also we trace back is a bit different from the needleman wanch algorithm we start at the cell with the largest score in the matrix and trace back to the first zero when we encountered in the matrix so we stop at zero we start at the largest value in the score matrix and that will gives us a local alignment how we'll see in a with an example in some time and also note that there are multiple local alignments in this sequence are possible in other words there might be a multiple trace back paths which start with the largest score but end up with the different zeros so let's uh, start with the smith waterman al al alignment algorithm construction uh, of 2d score matrix is similar to the nw algorithm where they representing all possible pairs of the nucleotides from the two sequences including the empty sequence the recursive formula is slightly different it is a extended set of nw algorithms where we do not have this zero here the maximum value is is also includes the zero as a value in addition to other values i and j are the matrix indices similar to earlier global alignment algorithm s is substitution score between xi and yj and g is the gap penalty here also again for the example we use constant gap penalty so let's go back to our example number 
with the, this particular scoring scheme and the scoring matrix is going to be same size of 5 cross 7 because here again n is equal to 4 and m is equal to 6. So, we will name this one for uh, as of uh, understanding is of, is of 3, 4, 5. Initialize the 5 cross 7, uh, seven matrix first and the uh, rows and the columns are initialized with the zeros. Okay, so we do not give any negative value at all, gaps value. And the rest of the cells are filled according to the formula we have discussed. So we start with the one. So we start with this element two two. So d two two is computed using this formula. Remember there is a mismatch d11 is 0, so we have a score here is minus 1, minus 10, minus 10 and 0. So now we are going to fill out the score for second row and third column which is d23 which is this one. Here we have, I have computed the score 2 which is computed using the formula. Here we remember that d12 plus stt this is the match score and for the match we have a score equal to 2. Similarly, here d13 plus g which is basically minus 10 again d22 0 minus 10 is equal to minus 10 and 0 the maximum value is 2 so we compute it 2 and this comes from d12 so there is an arrow in that direction. It's in the same manner we can fill the rest of the cells of the our scoring matrix. Now we have to identify the cell with the maximum value which I can see here 5 is the cell with the maximum value. Okay, So this is our starting point. So we are going to trace back from the maximum scored cell and continue until we encounter the first 0. So we will do that. So that is what I have done. We started from this cell, we move to this cell, then we move to this cell, this move to this cell, and this move to this cell, and it goes to 0. Remember that there are not many paths, cell, uh, paths or arrows are there, so we can find easily. So, test back is simple, we move from cell number 5, 6, to 4, 5, to 3, 4, to 2, 3, to 1, 2 where the first time we encounter the 0. Remember in this path only 0 we encounter is this one. Hence the alignment here is TAGT with TAGT and this cap is just to ensure that there is a there might be a sequence the other side of both of this sequence. In this case you have a sequence uh, at one hand G, another hand and something else. Also, uh, recall that this represents the sequence that are most common with another one. It does not mean that it is the same region where you can have a complete perfect alignment. Here you can see that there is a mismatch, but this is the most common sub-region of uh, one sequence with the another sequence. So let me summarize sequence alignment. We studied why do we compare two sequences, different biological questions we, we can answer using sequence alignment. And also we studied how we can formulate sequence alignment problem as a Manhattan tourist problem and that can be solved using dynamic programming and we discussed that how we can use 
dynamic programming to solve sequence alignment problem. We discussed two different kind of sequence alignment problem. First one was a global alignment problem and for that we studied Diddleman Wunsch algorithm to solve the global alignment problem. Then we looked at local alignment problem and we also looked at the algorithm for solving local alignment problem which is Smith Waterman algorithm. What are the challenges? What we have discussed is a two sequence problem. There are different challenges which in practice one has to resolve when we try to compare sequences. There are multiple fragmented sequences. So, we have a multiple fragment and we want to align them. That is another pro one problem which we may encounter. We have to look at nice two sequences. There is a two sequences but multiple fragments. Multiple sequence alignments. We have a not only two but more than two and we want to actually align them. There are sequence with a high rate of substitution and indels or you can say mismatches and the gaps what we can do about that. So, these are the challenges which often we uh, face in the practice and we have to actually improve some of these algorithms to handle these challenges. Also, there are certain online tools available where some of these algorithms have been implemented. So, you can go to uh, European Bioinformatic Institute's website where the global alignment as well, local alignment problems are, uh, are implemented using online tools. So, you have to give just sequences and it can perform the global and local alignment. So, I would like to thank you with this particular session.